Hey guys, it's Vintage Vinny, and I have a flea market haul to share with you today. Got a great assortment of stuff as usual, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you all. Stay tuned. So the very first item I'd like to share with you all in this haul is something that I posted to Instagram. If you follow me there, you would have already seen this. This is a 1960s Austin Healey car. It's for... You guessed it, Barbie. It's got marks and stuff all over it, but it's very old and very cool. There we go. Licensed by Mattel. And it should say... Right here. Irwin, made in the USA. In the condition that it sits, I can probably sell it, if I were going to sell it, for probably $20, $25. It's missing the windshield, but I don't care. It was $3, and Barbie and Ken are going to love their retro ride. All right, last larger item is something that, as soon as I saw it, I knew it would probably bring me some money. This is a Permanap brand... Uh, patterns called Bed of Roses. It's by Beacon, made here in the U.S. Shabby chic rose blanket. New old stock, never been used. In terms of what I can get for this, not exactly sure because I didn't really do my research yet. But I know this will probably generate some good money because Shabby chic is in. And I'm sure somebody will love it. And I can definitely tell this is from the 60s, judging by the style of that room. That's definitely the vibes it's given me. So yeah, that was a really good find. I think this may have been a dollar. Okay, so now that we went through the two larger items, we can go ahead and get into the smaller items. So in no particular order, for 80s Toy Hunter, I found her a new old stock Smurf in the package from 1982. These don't go for a whole lot, they're mass produced. A lot of people had them, and they're still out there. This was a dollar. Now this came in a lot of items, again for $10, so she was basically a dollar. Judging by this leash, I think she either had something attached to her or there were miniature pups to go along with it. It's a vinyl toy. It is marked Japan. Overall in very good condition, no rips or tears. She's actually more red than what you see on camera. She looks kind of pinkish, but she's more red in person. In terms of what I can get for this, maybe $20. Like I said, in very good shape, no rips or tears. I might spray her with something to get rid of the funky smell because she's been sitting with a bunch of other vintagey stuff. don't think this guy is worth anything. It's a Snoopy figurine or like toy from I think the 80s. Maybe it's from the 60s. The shoes say I think 1985 if I'm not mistaken or 1982. Let's see if it'll show up on camera. Yeah, maybe not. I think that says 1982. Maybe it says 1962. I'll try it again. It's definitely an 8 I see on the left. Um, not going for a whole lot, so I think what I might end up doing is sending this to 80's Toy Hunter. I think she'll enjoy that. All right, from a lady who I haven't seen in a few years because when we were living down in our old area, we would go to another market that was kind of out near Baltimore. And over the last few years, the market really kind of tanked. There wasn't a lot of vintagey stuff. So we stopped going there. And on top of that, the commute was pretty long. At this market that I go to now, I can be there in 45 minutes. Anyway, I was really surprised to see her because I hadn't seen this person since we stopped going there. And I was really happy to see her because she usually has great prices on her things. So one of the things that I got is this awesome 
Pony Boy toy cap gun. As you can see, lots of residue from the cap powder over the years. And overall in good condition, I'm definitely going to clean it up before I sell it. It even has the original holster. Last one of these that I sold was a couple years ago, and I think I sold it for like $35, $40. So I think after I clean it up, I might be able to get $35, $40. So again, these were a dollar a piece. These are for Miss Stone Home. Thought of her immediately. She loves that new old stock packaging, so I got her this little pack of bow pins. Never been used. She loves the stuff that has the old tags on them. So I think she will enjoy displaying this for her Christmas this year. Those were a buck. Now these, there were a bunch of others of these honeycomb bells. Unfortunately, most of them have disintegrated because of age. This one, seemed to be okay, and this one looked to be okay as well because it was more plasticky. So I think she will really enjoy those. For 50 cents, I got this from Miss Stone Home also, and it was after I found those bow pins in the box. I found a minute bow maker. It's got all the pieces to it, and it's even got the pins to it as well. That was an awesome find for Miss Stone Home. For a dollar a piece, I snagged these, what I believe to be from the 70s. They are 7-Up aprons. New old stock, never been used. Not exactly sure what these will bring. I might keep one and sell the other. And I might use one for Halloween, I'm not sure. It's not Coke, but I will make do with it. Anyway, 60s, 70s, I will probably have to do some more research on these. So this guy had a bunch of random small stuff and I just kind of saw this in the vicinity of his table. I saw the little, I think that's a devil earring. It's a clip-on. I liked the old art on the card that they were on. One earring's missing. He quoted me a dollar. I was perfectly okay with paying that and he's, he basically begged me to take it. And I was like, okay, I'll take it for a dollar. I like the font and everything on that. Now these were $5 a piece, and I think they're going to show up much better on here than they would in the light. So this looks like a cat burglar of some sort. There, that's a much better view. Or, I don't know, looks like, yeah, looks like a burglar. It says Germany. I can't remember what the guy said these were, but they're for stereo, like some kind of slide for a lamp. Paid $5 for five of them, so a dollar a piece. I think these are going to look great in an old jar. So that's the first one. This one is of a cowboy. I think I have it backwards. This one is of cowboys and Indians. I think this is another cowboy and Indians. I think this is the same one as the other one, so maybe I'll sell that, that duplicate. Or if you're interested, let me know in the comments below. This one's cool. It's got clowns riding different animals. Very neat. So yeah, $5 for those was a really good price, I thought. And I'd never seen anything like that before. So I found this perfume, it's by, it's Paradis by Bermuda, Paradis des Bermuda by Lily. Uh, I think this came in the box lot of stuff for, so I may have paid a dollar for that. Vintage perfumes, depending on what it is, can actually do pretty well. I have this up for $39.99 in my eBay shop if you're interested. Let me show you guys what the bottle looks like, nothing special. Practically full. It does kind of smell like old lady, but hey, if this smell kind of reminds you of a family member who used to wear it, why not, right? My grandmother was famous for wearing Red Door by Elizabeth Arden, and she also wore uh, White Diamonds by Elizabeth Taylor. Both of those are... Oh. But every time I smell it, 
I smell her, which sounds odd, but that's just kind of how humans are. Like, we associate certain smells with certain things. This awesome piece of mid-century lighting was $3. It's a lucite lamp with fish and, uh, I guess, some seaweed and some seashells. Basically what you do is you put a light that's pretty much the same size as a blow mold light and you stick it in here and it lights up. I'm going to keep this for myself because I like this a lot. Unless they sell for a decent number on eBay. And then I'll probably sell it. But I do like that a lot. And because my room is nautical themed, I think this would look really good in here. But we will see once I do research. This was also $3. It's a pink poodle from 1965. As you can see, she's a little dirty, you know, from age, which is normal. Overall in very good condition. This was made by Holiday Fair in Japan. It even has the original tag on it. Holiday Fair, and it's an autograph pal. Now, I'm going to clean her up a little bit, and then I'll probably end up doing some research. Anywhere from $20 to $25 is my rough guesstimate right now, but until I do research, that's what I'm thinking I can get for her. Overall, in very good condition, pink is really in right now, so I think this will do well. I'll turn this up a little bit for you guys, so that way I feel like you guys are seeing everything. So I was just heading around the different booths, and I noticed this shoe. It's all beaded. It's definitely old. I mean, look at the back of that. I thought of Miss Stone Home immediately. I asked the lady how much it was. She was like, oh, a dollar. And I was like, okay. I thought of Miss Stone Home immediately when I saw this. I think her daughter's room is in this style, or that room that she has for herself is in this style, so I think she will really enjoy that. You can put matches in here. You could put toothpicks in here. You could put whatever the heck you want in here. But it's very detailed. There's lots of beading on it. I don't even know what era this is from. This has got to be early. But yeah, I thought that was neat, and I know Miss Stone Home appreciates things like this. From that same lady, I found this really, really awesome egg dish. It was $2. I don't think it was actually meant to be used. I think it was just something you hung on the wall, because as you can see, there are two holes up there. No markings on the back, but I thought it was really, really neat. And I kind of couldn't leave that behind. There's lots of crazing on it, so that really kind of gives it the age. I thought that would be a really cool piece for Easter or just for everyday decor. I really liked that. For a dollar, I picked up this Bonomo Ritual magazine. It says how to beautify your bust contour. Very pinup-y. That's what attracted me to it. I think this was part of a series because it says number eight. And if I didn't show you already, it was a whole dollar. Let me go ahead and open this up and show you all some of the stuff that's in here. Just little exercise rituals. Just fun stuff like that. Kind of can't leave stuff like that behind when I see it. This was a whole dollar. Go ahead and look this up real quick. This is a ballet dancer's coloring book. Very, very nice details and illustrations in here. That's going to be another Miss Stone Home piece. It's funny, as soon as I found out what she liked, I kind of start seeing it a lot. And this has been colored in, but it's older. See, like, look at that. That is just awesome. It's by the Merrill Company, and it doesn't say a year. Bummer. Oh, there it is. MCMXLIX. That's got to be the 50s or the 60s. But yeah, that's just really awesome art. That's shabby chic, I think, with the style of that, and I think she will absolutely love it. Funny enough, I was just watching Jeffrey, Real Nifty Vintage, and um, his sister-in-law, Barb, and they picked up these whale salt and pepper shakers i think barb did i think was it he or was it barb that got these anyway these are really cool they're made by oh they just say a quality product japan 
No cracks or chips, I just really liked those a lot. And three bucks is what I paid for the set. So I thought those were very, very cool. So this came from the same lady that I bought the ballet coloring book and some of that other stuff. She was asking five for this, and honestly, I don't mind paying her what she's asking because most of her stuff is priced pretty reasonably. And I know I give a lot of other vendors crap, especially in my videos about some of the ways they price things. But, like I said, this lady, she prices her stuff to sell and to move. Anyway, this is from 1952. It's uh, Quick Magazine, and on the front is Dinah Shore. What attracted me to this magazine... Let me go ahead and show it to you. I just think this ad is killer cool. Look at this ad for Butterfinger. How awesome is that? When I opened it up and flipped through it, I knew I had to have this. Especially for that art. Maybe I'll make this my thumbnail. Don't hate me if y'all hate clowns. Some are a little creepy, some of them are okay with me. Now I was just at the, uh, the Black Rose, which is out in Chambersburg, and funny enough, I spent $91 there. So you guys will see another haul video, hopefully very soon after this one. And I mean, I'm gonna make way more than what I spent, but you know, still 91 bucks is hefty. So like I said, this lady has she has $1 table, she's got a $5 table, or 3 for 10, and then she also has a section in the middle with stuff that's priced as marked. So I went ahead and picked up some magazines, so I ended up spending $3.33 on these. We've got Screenland from February of 1947 with Paulette Goddard. We have Screen Album from... What month is this from? Oh, this doesn't even say. I just like the fact that it had Lana Turner on the front of it. Probably 1949, 1950. We have Movie Show Magazine with Betty Hutton. We have a photo play magazine featuring Hollywood 10 top pinups. Couldn't leave that one behind. And then the last magazine... We have a photo play from April of 1943 with Jean Tierney on it. At the end of this video, I will go ahead and show you what's in those magazines. I just don't want this to be a completely long video. So to go along with that bow maker, this was also 50 cents, this little elf knee hugger. I think this originally came with a candy cane because both of his arms are joined together. That was just a fun little piece, and I'll be adding that to my ornament stash. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. This is just going to go in my old jar. This is a rabbit's foot, and I knew by the chain that it was older. A uh, lady charged me 50 cents for that. If you all know, a while back I found two of these boots that go to an eggnog set by Napco. This was a dollar. The other ones I think I paid $2 for a piece. I'm going to have to get this black gunk off of here. It looks like it'll come off with maybe like Clorox or something. I'm not taking acetone to it because that'll ruin it. Alright, and then the last piece... Oh, here's another one of those bells. I might keep one of these for myself. Alright, so after this last piece, I'm going to get into some salt and pepper shakers that I purchased along with the item that the salt and pepper shakers are sitting on. So this was $2. I don't know what attracted me to it, but I really liked it. There's no marking on it, nor do I know what it is. Not usually attracted to items that are gold or brass, but something about this piece just kind of spoke to me when I saw it. It was an older gentleman who was selling it, and he said it was a really neat piece. And he said it was two bucks, and I said, you know what, it is really neat, I think I'm going to keep it. I think this is probably from anywhere from the 20s up through the 40s. 
As you can see, there is some paint missing, but like I said, that just adds to the charm. No cracks or chips. Oop, I think there's a derriere there. Sorry, ladies. But this piece just spoke to me, and I think this will be a neat conversation piece, I think. All right, so now we're going to get into the salt and pepper shakers. Normally, I try to steer clear of them, but because I've been, you know, going out a lot and finding different things to list in my eBay shop, I thought, why not give salt and pepper shakers a try, especially when you can get them dirt cheap. This guy had millions of them. He asked me if I was interested in any of them, and he, I said, yeah, why not? So he said, make me an offer. And so I said, 50 cents a pair, and he said, sold. So I went in and just picked out a, ones that I thought were cool. A couple of them are for me, and then a couple are to resell. These ones with the spackled blue, I'm probably going to end up keeping. They do have a mark on them. Um, I wonder if I can make out what they say. If I have to take this off camera for a second, I apologize. Jean, H-O. Anyway, 50 cents a piece. I liked these for myself. I found these bowling pin ones. They're both marked Japan. Both have their stoppers. I'll be keeping those also. Found this awesome ginger jar starburst pair. Also made in Japan. One of them, I think it's this one, has a lot of crazing on it. But from a distance, you're not going to be able to tell. This one I think is free of any crazing. Thought those were really interesting. Now these froggy ones right here are really, really cute. I think somebody's going to really like these. Both have their stoppers. I would assume they were probably made in Japan. I'm thinking upwards of $10 on those. I also found these really cute turtles. Both have Japan stamped on them. And I think because these ones are a little bit bigger, I think $12.99 is what I'll ask for those. All right, bear with me, folks. I got to take everything off of this so I can show you all the last item, which I was pleasantly surprised to have found because it is such a neat piece. And I can't really say if it's my favorite because I found a lot of things that I liked. And actually, after I show you this, I'm going to have to pause and go ahead and get the other item I was going to share, share with you all. Alright, so let me go ahead and adjust the camera so you guys can see this. By the way, this only cost me $3. And when I saw it, I knew I had to have it. And I almost missed it. Look at this awesome advertising tray from Jones Restaurant Equipment Company in Oklahoma. Now, let me go ahead and zoom in for you. As you can see, there is... Is there a zip code on here? Yeah, there is. So this is after 1963. But even still, this is just an awesome piece of advertising. I don't know if there are a whole lot of these out there, but I definitely like this. I mean, look at that. Old San Francisco Steakhouse Barbary Coast Bar ad. You've got restaurants that are probably not even around anymore, or at least not that I've heard of. You've got the Hickory House. We've got Steak and Ale. Wendy's, of course, everybody knows. We've got Exxon Chemicals. Ann Terrace. Perkins Cake and Steak. We've got Town Anatole in Dallas. We've got the Holiday Inn with the Wimbledon. Like I said, this is just such a cool piece. I couldn't leave it behind for $3. I knew it was made here in the U.S. because there's a little bit of a embossment in the tray itself. So this was just really, really cool. Um, I think I'm going to be keeping this and using it to hold all of my haul things. Or all the things I'm going to be sharing with you all in haul videos. So let me go ahead and pause this real quick and I'll get my last item. Sorry folks, I forgot I wanted to share the back of this with you all because I still think it's very cool. 
There's different styles of, I guess, tables that they used to use back in the day. It says, Volrath highlight trays, layer upon layer of, whoa, impregnated material laminated together for cost saving durability. Just different styles, I guess, of trays. This one, I think, is this one right here, the Sunlight Gold. Like I said, I almost walked past this thing. It was literally underneath this person's table, and I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's interesting. You only want $3? I'll take it. So let me go ahead and grab that last item for you. I completely forgot about this awesome apple here. This is a chalkware piece. If I haven't said it before, I absolutely love apples. They're my favorite fruit. This one's really cool because it's in the shape of a house, and there's a little worm coming out of it. Hollow on the inside. Originally, the lady had it for two, and we kind of started talking, and I was telling her about some of the things that I collect, and, you know, she said, you know, how about you take this off my hands for a dollar? I was like, okay, I don't mind. I like apples, and I think this will look great in the kitchen someday. And finally, the last piece that I picked up was also a dollar, and it came from the same lady that I got the ballerina coloring book and all those awesome magazines. Not entirely sure of the age, but I think it's definitely a cool piece. This is a champagne glass. The goddess that's holding it is frosted. I've seen similar items like this in an antique shop, and they were, I think, maybe like new ladies or something. But this is really cool. I think this could be anywhere from, like I said, don't quote me because I'm not sure. I think because of the style, it could be anything from the 20s up through the 60s. Like I said, no markings on her, but I think she's definitely a very cool piece to display. You could probably put candy in there. You could do anything you wanted with this. And for a whole dollar, and it's funny, the lady that I bought the tray from and that apple, she had uh, pointed this out to me, and then when I saw who was selling it, I knew she was going to offer me a great deal. So when this was shown to me and I saw it, I kind of fell in love with it. Bought it. No cracks or chips. If you all have any idea on what era this is from, please let me know in the comments below. And that concludes this haul video. Let's go ahead and I'll see you all in just a sec. Real quick note here. I think this may have been for string at some point because this apple has like a really hollow, deep ditch in it. So I think this may have been something that went in the kitchen and it was for string. Just a little note there. So that concludes this haul video for today. What did you think? Did you like the stuff I picked up? Do you think the people will like the stuff that I bought for them? Leave it in the comments down below. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to know when new videos are posted. All the links to my social media accounts are down below in the description box as well. Instagram is where I'm most currently active, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and stay tuned for more!